words you probably have heard, especially if you're on social media, or the news programs, or politics. And those words are cancel culture. Cancel culture. The word, those words are out there. It means to reject or stop supporting someone because they have said or done something that offends you. And uh, social media, it's all over the place. Facebook, people, you get banned for saying something that offends somebody. Or it may be Twitter or Instagram or, or some podcast or something else like that. And all of a sudden, you get, you offend somebody and they cut you off. They don't want to try to silence you because of what your view is on a certain thing. And, and it seems that those who operate the social media, they're the ones that control a lot of it as far as trying to a certain segment of the population they don't want to hear from, they want to put their own views forth, so therefore it's cancel culture. If you don't agree with me, then I'm going to shut you down. That's what they will have us to believe. You could lose your job over it. There have been those who have individuals who maybe support a certain issue or don't support it. It may be they're against abortion, and the company you work for is a pro-abortion company. They support certain uh, or fund certain works or clinics, and, and you stand up against it, you could lose your job. There have been teachers who have lost their jobs because they have uh, they refuse to use these pronouns of the transgender group. Instead of he or she, they want to be called something else, and teachers refuse to do that. The boys who think they're girls and girls who think they're boys, and they refuse to do such, and therefore sometimes they lose their job. But as we know, America has changed. It's never been perfect, but it seems that no more hiding, hide and seek, no more hiding. Let's put it out there for public display. There's no shame in sin anymore. Let's just put it out there and, and try to get famous over it. And that's what has happened. But council culture, as it is today, is nothing new. It's been around a long, long time. It's been around even in times of Bible history. You find it. Isaiah 520. Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. So you have these individuals that they call the good bad and the bad good. They do that. And it's hard to understand how they can see it that way. And the reason is because of what the devil has done. He has been at this for a long time. From the very beginning, he's been trying to silence those who speak truth. He wants to silence them. And he's been around for a while doing that such of a thing from the very beginning. And he has a lot of tools available to him to do this. And whatever that tool is in which he can try to silence truth is what he will use in the process. When people no longer have a knowledge of God, or they no longer have a, a respect for God, that's when you have this council culture stuff beginning. You go back to Exodus chapter 1, verses 89, after the death of Joseph. Now there arose a new king over Egypt who did not know Joseph. And he said to the people, Look, the people of the children of Israel are more and mightier than we. It wasn't that this new king, or Pharaoh, did not know Joseph. He didn't know the God of Joseph either. Because, you know, Joseph was very, with the, with the under Pharaoh he served under, uh, there was a lot of, of uh, sharing about God, and things that God had done in his family's life, and this and that. So this new king, over a period of time, the new one comes in, and he doesn't know anything about Joseph or Joseph's God. So therefore, if we have council culture fixing to happen here, all because this king doesn't know. He sees that the children of Israel are, are growing. So the first thing he tries to do to stop this is he puts a lot of burden on the people of Israel, a great burden. 
he puts on them. And through work and slavery, if that doesn't work, it increases. They increase in number. So he says, I gotta, I gotta stop this. I gotta cancel them out. There, there's too much there. And in Exodus 1, 16 and 17, he goes to step two, and he said, when you do the duties of a midwife for the Hebrew women, and see them on the birth stools, if it is a son, then you shall kill him, but if it is a daughter, then she shall live. But the midwives feared God and did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, but saved the male children alive. So he's trying to cancel out this growth among Israel. And by doing so, let's just, he got the midwives, at least try to get the midwives to kill these newborn male babies, but they didn't do it. And the reason they didn't do it, they feared God. They understood what he was about. Well, plan two doesn't work. Uh, he realizes that these male children are not dying as they should. He goes to plan three in Exodus 1.22. So Pharaoh commanded all his people, saying, Every son who is born to you shall, shall cast into the river, and every daughter you shall save alive. So hoping this would work, all the newborn male children throw them in the river, they'll drown, or that crocodiles, alligators, while they got over there, get them and eat them, maybe. So he's going to try that. And of course, we know this Moses, his mother or sister, did cast him in the river, except he was in a basket. He, did, he didn't just get in the water, he got in the basket. But anyway, if you were a good Egyptian and you saw a male child, a newborn male child, it was your obligation to report it and see to it that this child was destroyed. So he tried that and he, he had success in some ways about that. There are numerous other examples of how one would try to silence the other one of the cause of truth. Take, for example, King Saul, when he tried to silence David, 1 Kings chapter 16. Uh, Saul knew that, that his time was limited. And Saul knew that David was going to take his place. And on numerous occasions, he tried to uh, kill David. He tried to silence David. And he's really trying to silence God. He disagreed with God. He disagreed with God's decision to put him, uh, to put David in his place. So there's an example of, of council culture, trying to counsel out David. You had Jezebel there in 1 Kings 18 and 19. She had numerous prophets killed, murdered because of what they were teaching. And she didn't like it. So I'm just going to kill them. And I, I don't agree with it. I'm going to kill them. And, and she did. A lot of them. But she didn't kill all of them. But she did get a lot of them. She did. There King Ahab. There's, a, there's the uh, prophet Micaiah. First Kings chapter 22. Uh, King Ahab beat him and imprisoned him and for, uh, for speaking out uh, there against what Ahab had to say. So I don't like it. I'll beat you, put you in prison. The next one was the priest Pashur uh, versus Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapters 20 and also chapter 38. And Pashur here hated what Jeremiah was saying. And he was a priest. Uh, Jeremiah was, was warning the people that this particular priest didn't like it. He wanted to tell everybody everything's great, everything's good. Don't listen to this man. So what does he do to Jeremiah? He puts him in stocks for a while. And then he, he beat him. And then he threw him in a pit. A mud pit. A well, you might say. And there for him to die. In order to shut him up. So he didn't agree with what Jeremiah was saying. So let's just cancel him out. We have King Herod versus the baby Jesus in Matthew chapter 2. Herod heard that the new baby was born, a new king in town. Nobody would tell him any, any information on it. 
So he orders all the male children under the age of two years to die. So he's going to try to cancel that. He didn't want this child to be in his presence and sell him as a threat. So he orders for the male children under two to die. Herod Antipas didn't like what John the Baptist had to say. John was telling him that your marriage is unscriptural. You can't have your wife. That's your brother's wife. You can't have her. He didn't like him. So he had him imprisoned and eventually had him beheaded. So again, Antipas, council culture of his kingdom. You have many religious leaders that were against Jesus in John chapter 11 in particular. They didn't like what they saw. This is when Christ raised Lazarus from the dead. That was the straw that broke the camel's back for these religious leaders. I mean, they were just flocking to Christ, so they had to come up with a plan to, to silence him. And they were plotting. This one to real, it got real serious. How can we do this? How can we put him to death? How can we frame him? So they were against Christ. And then the religious leaders against the apostles. All kinds of examples. Acts 4, 5, 7, 9, all through there. Are these leaders trying to hush these apostles. They didn't like what they were saying. They didn't like what they were doing. They were healing people. They were getting a following. They would beat these men. They would put them in prison, in jail. Angels would get them out. Well, it was all over the place. So they were trying to stop these men from what they were, having, what they were teaching when it comes to truth. So Christians today, what we see here, we have nothing to complain about when it comes to uh, thinking that we're the only ones that may be experiencing council culture. <laughs> Somebody's trying to cancel, cancel out what we have to say, what we have to teach, because it's been around for a long, long time. Nobody likes truth, especially the truth that comes from God. They don't like it. So uh, just get used to it. doesn't mean we stop. But get used to it knowing that it's, it's, some, it's, it's here and it's probably just going to get worse as time goes on. If you've watched any programs or news when uh, you have some of the, what they were called conservatives, when they begin to try to talk to a group of people, or it may be a conservative is out, maybe uh, just having lunch somewhere, here come these group of individuals, and they'll start screaming and hollering, trying to silence the individual, causing a ruckus, a turmoil, hoping nobody will listen. We've probably seen that happen. Again, that's, that's nothing unusual in the scriptures. In Acts 7, verse 57, when Stephen was teaching, telling about Christ and what he was about, and all there in chapter 7, then they cried out with a loud voice, stopped their ears, and ran at him with one accord. They were going to stop him, and they did. They did stop him. They stoned him. Because they killed him. But again, that's what the, uh, they did here. It worked for them. They thought it would work. They probably tried it again somewhere else. But the sad part about this tactic that, they're, that they use today you have those who are, the, we say, on the conservative side. Now they're starting to do it. They are, here's maybe a liberal individual giving a speech or a talk. It could be anybody. And here they come, they're doing the same thing. They start yelling, screaming, chanting things, trying to drown out the speaker so nobody can hear what he has to say. Again, that's not right. It's not right on either side for that to be. There's, there's proper ways for one to respond if you disagree with somebody. Proper ways for that. And Christ gives us the proper ways when we come across those that we disagree with when it comes to truth. Luke 6, 31 and 33. And just as you want men to do to you, you also do to them likewise. That's the golden rule. 
But if you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Or even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? Or even sinners do the same. Do unto others as they have you, as you want them to do unto you. Treat them with that respect. Love those who, who agree with you and love those who disagree with you. Love them. Do good to those who disagree with you. Do good to those who agree with you. That's what Christ is telling us right here. That's how you handle it. You don't go out here and start chanting, screaming, and all that. You love them and you do good to them. Now that's where the difference is. In Luke 6 and verse 27 28, we back up a couple verses. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who spitefully use you. So which one is easier? To yell back and protest or to love them, pray for them, do good for them? Which one is easier? Well, it's easier scream and holler. That's easier. It's not easy to love your enemies. It's not easy to love those who curse you or pray for those who, who spitefully use you. That's not easy to do. But yet Christ said, that's what you ought to do. That's what you ought to do instead of getting out and, and, uh, and causing a scene. Causing a scene by, by showing love and respect to In Mark 16 and verse 15, and he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That includes those who disagree with you. That includes those with a council culture. They need to hear the message of Christ too. And they really need to hear. So uh, we can't be quiet. We can't be. We won't speak it as Christ told his disciples, the rocks will. The rocks will speak it. We gotta speak it. And not not be uh, ashamed. Scared. Revelation 2:10. Do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. And thee the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested, and you will have tribulation ten days. Be faithful unto death, and I will give you the crown of life. So, speak the truth, and, and the devil will get after you. He very well could. How you would do it, that's any number of ways, I guess. But whatever it may be, be faithful. Be faithful to the truth. Be faithful to the one who gives us the truth. Be faithful to him. God expects us to be faithful, even in, in the difficult times or situations. Genesis 6 and verse 5. The Lord saw that the weakness of man was great in the earth and every intent of his thought of his heart was only evil continually. Noah was faithful. Faithful preacher. I was in verse 5 of chapter 7. Noah did according to all that the Lord Command him. And we know that there had to be those who disagreed with Noah, who mocked him. Watch what you're doing, how you're doing it, whatever. But Noah kept doing it. He kept going on. He didn't let the, their disagreement with him stop him from doing what the Lord said. Uh, there, we got other examples. Moses, when he faced Pharaoh, he was faithful. He did what God told him to do. Uh, Joshua and Caleb, they, uh, they faced discouragement probably from those other spies and other own people about going into the land. But they, they remained faithful to God. That Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they faced death, but they were faithful to God. They hung in there. Daniel was faithful to God when, when those around him tried to set him up. Pass that law that you can't pray to anybody except the king, except him. Well, he 
He was faithful to God during all that. And again, on it goes. Individuals in Hebrews chapter 11. It's just full of individuals. And how Hebrews 11 says that the, work, the, the, work, the earth was not worthy to have them to walk on it because of their faithfulness. So we got to be faithful as well in difficult times. Philippians 3, 18 through 20. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are enemies of the cross of Christ, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, and whose glory is their shame, who set their mind on earthly things. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. There's enemies of the cross, even today. Those who don't want to hear it. They don't, it's a, it offends them to talk about things that, that Christ has commanded us to talk about. We still are to do it in the right way. It's got to be done. Now, cancel culture isn't just about politics. When you get rid of right down to it, it's about it's about truth that the Lord has given to us. And don't forget where our citizenship is. Now, right now, we've got dual citizenship. We're, you know, Americans, but also our real citizenship is in heaven. And we're not always going to be on this earth. We're not always going to be an American. One of these days, we're going to be a, a dead American. And therefore, our citizenship is in heaven. And we've got to remember that. And not lose focus of the, the importance of that. And then, uh, Romans 15, 5 and 6. Now may the Lord, now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another. Lord in Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we serve a God of patience. We're not always patient. But we've got to remember that God is in control of this thing. He knows exactly what's going on. When it comes to truth, he's going to work it out. We may not like how he does it, but, uh, but uh, he's going to do the right thing. And we always give him the glory. And then our last verse, Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt, that you may know how you ought to answer each one. That's the right way to answer those, to talk to those who disagree with us. A right way to do it. In our own way. We try to do it the right way. Truth and love, some, have it in the middle there somewhere. If we're all truth, remember a couple weeks ago when, our, when we had a guest speaker at Sunday night, Ryan Gallagher from Hamilton. If it's all truth, it might not be too stern. If it's all love, it might let things get by that it shouldn't be. Too much uh, acceptance. And it's in the middle there somewhere, the word say what we do. Let our speech always be according to the way of God. And answer. Give an answer. Anything on council culture? All right. A couple minutes early, but uh, something we uh, need to let you know about, you can help with. Uh, we're going to have a meal for the Gunnels family. It'll be uh, Friday. The family will be here at 11.30 and have the food here at 11. If you could help with that, see Sheila. She has a list. So instead of waiting after the service is it, you can go ahead and help with that. Just see Sheila. She has a list. Get that filled out. Okay. Thank you for your attention tonight. <laughs>